Let's talk about the rappers for a minute. Can we talk about the rappers for a moment? Let's talk about Tupac Shakur for a moment. Tupac Shakur is a child of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, born out of the spirit of the revolution of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, fire in his bones. Huh? Boldness and rebellion in his blood. Born from his beautiful, bold Black Panther mama, Afeni. Sitting in the jail cell, a revolutionary woman carrying the fruit of life, mocking the child in her womb, mocking the child with rebellion, mocking the child with insurrection, mocking the child with a spirit to not go along with what's been going on. To beat me, young G, with a gift to gamble. They hurry me, that's what they all say. It's time to make a killing, show to make a million with the Vontae. All right, so, you know, Shug started managing Jodeci. Mm. Wow. Right? Now, Rob, the governor. Right. And it's home. Mm -hmm. How bad was that situation? Well, man, they split his skull over. Oh, so they, uh, they pistol whipped him? Yeah. Tied him up. Man, he was fighting back. He bit one of the guy's fingers off, and... Where he bit one of the guy's fingers yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, it, it was bad. Well, I got bad. That's true. <laughs> I don't believe that's true. Try it again. Only Gab can do it like this. This was a pre recorded interview with my homeboy, Reggie Wright Jr. Get well, big homie. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. Today. We're going to be talking to my death row insider, my death row historian, my main man, Reggie Wright Jr. You know, um, one of my favorite artists, and definitely my favorite producer, Devontae Swain, did something that I had never seen before in music history, period. And that was walking away from the industry at the very height of your career. I mean, Devontae wrote all the hits for Jodeci. He produced the tracks. He embodied Jodeci, man. He had the swag. He was everything, man. And, you know, he had that home invasion. And, you know, there's a lot of rumors sw swirling around what happened to him. We're going to on, go into that today because, you know, Reggie Wright was very much part of the death row movement, and so was Jodeci. But I just wonder what would cause a guy to walk away from everything? Did he feel like, you know, the music industry wasn't ultimately worth his life? Did they put the fear of God in him? What happened to him during that home invasion? I'm just trying to figure out, can you bring some clarity today, Raj, to some of the rumors that were swirling around, you know, the death row and Jodeci situation and what happened to Devontae? If you, if you know anything pertaining to it, then, you know what I mean, answer to the best of your ability. How about that? Let's go. All right. So, you know, one of the rumors was is that, you know, that – uh Shug had that done to Devontae. Could you explain? Do you uh, believe that to be true or false? Okay, what, tell me what year did that happen because Devontae Swain was back around us when Shug came home from jail about um, 2000, well, 2001. It had to be in 2001 because I left Shug in 2002 of January. So in two, from, January, from August 2001 to uh, January 2002, Sugar and Devontae was still cool. So after, if it happened after that, then I definitely can't speak on it. But if it happened prior to that, the home invasion, then I can tell you absolutely, absolutely not. Because uh, when Sugar was in jail, I went to visit Devontae a few times to try to get some tracks for him on Danny, Danny Boy. And I think Mr. Ray, by that time, he was way out there. <laughs> he was out there. Wow. Now, it happened, the, the home invasion, I believe, happened somewhere between 92 and 95. And, um, you oh, know, I heard, I, heard, I heard him, I heard him 
And I heard Jodeci say that absolutely Shook didn't have anything to do with that. Matter of oh, fact, yeah. he said Shook helped them down, but these, this is one of the rumors that, that's floating around. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Oh, um, no. Well, then I can speak on this, then, because I know what that's about there. And I didn't know what it was about, but now I know what it's about. It's this crippled motherfucker out here that kind of was running the industry. He had hammering him on lock and all of them named Michael Concepcion. He's the guy that eventually put Rome out. And I spoke on it a couple of times when he kind of comes to concerts and puts up on KC when KC and uh, JoJo had that song out. I'm sorry, KC and uh, Mary J had that song out. She had the hot song on the uh, Wait to Excel soundtrack, if you, uh, I'm Going Down. And KC right. had that remake of uh, If You Think You Lonely Now. He had that remake out, and they were promoting that. And this nigga right before that name, Michael Concepcion, was uh, pushing up on him. So if anything happened to him, that's what pushed Jodeci and Devontae over to Shug because they ran to him for protection from Michael Concepcion. And that was around 94, 1994. Right, okay. So, that, so the dates all match up. Now, this guy, Michael, you said he was handicapped? Man, this nigga... Is a cripple nigga, an ex pimp, but got a lot of juice in LA. And like I said, Hammer, who was from Oakland, and they was cut, and his brother, Louis Burrell, that nigga wasn't no punk, but he kind of had those niggas in a headlock. And so, like I said, Michael Concepcion wasn't a punk, but she didn't have no fear for him. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But, I remember we was in a studio. We was in the studio one time, and uh, Michael Concepcion called. We was in Rock. We was in the studio in Rochester, New York. We were dropping Danny Boy off to, to do some work with Devontae, and this was in mm, probably early '95, late '94, and they were telling him, "Man, this dude Michael Concepcion keep pushing up on us, keep pushing up on us, and all of that," and so sure. Either he told him to get him on the phone, or he called. And uh, so he called, he's like, yeah, you know, he was banging on him and stuff. And she told him, because it was on a speaker box, she told him, hey, Mike, it's sure. Don't fuck with these niggas no more. These niggas with me now. So we're going to have problems if you keep fucking with them. And these are my niggas now. They with me. And, and Mike was like, all right, you know, I'm sure he probably had some choice words. I forget how the conversation went. But then we bumped into Michael Concepcion at this club called Grand Slam a few months later. And, um, and uh, it was Prince Old Club in L.A. And uh, it was downtown on Grand and 3rd, I think. And, uh, and Michael was like, man, sure, why are you, you fucking up my money, man? You, you, know, you got your shit. You fucking up my money. You, uh... You, you you know fucking you know banging on me for those those, those niggas from out of town those Jersey niggas and all that and that's when she said hey you crippled motherfucker I told you those niggas would be now <laughs> uh, you know I was like damn it was just me and shit <laughs> and he had about <laughs> ten niggas with him <laughs> he was like hey shit shit wasn't no joke shit wasn't no joke I tell you you know his his credibility well not credibility but his street the street connects went down after he got out of jail and shit, you know, 2003, 2004, especially after the money went short. But 95, 96, 94, mm-hmm. you don't want to fuck with that nigga. He'll get, get a bad rap on a lot of bullshit, a lot of bullshit. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he liked the legend, and, and that, that legend is what's going to fight him in the ass because people believe all of that bullshit. A lot of people believe that, that monster right. man boogie shit. But that was Shug. Yeah. Shug ain't that dude. Shug, every case, every time Shug and I got in trouble, it was for going to defend another motherfucker. Hmm. It was going for that, for somebody he loved. Now, Shug had an eye yeah. for talent. Shug was a very yeah. smart guy. He had a lot of business savvy, too. I'm sure he knew who the true star of Jodeci was. He knew. Oh, he did. He knew that was Devontae. So, he, knew, uh, uh, he got, he got, he got Devontae a deal. Most people don't know he got him a major production deal, and he never put out. He put out a group, a female group, the girl that was in, I think SWV, the lead singer in that. I think he was supposed to work with her. 
Was the group called Sister? Away. What was it called? Sister or something like that? Because it had Missy no. Elliott in it, right? Or somebody before that? No, no, no. It wasn't that group. Because, you know, eventually, you know, that's what Timberland and all of them got with Tweet and all of that. But no, it wasn't that. Um, it was uh, the group from, um, was it SWV? It wasn't SWV. What was the other uh, female group out? I'll think of them in a minute. I think, was it True Hurt? Shit? No, it wasn't her. But anyway, it was a female artist that broke away from one of those hot groups at the time from 94, 95. And he was supposed to have been just working on, on her. And uh, she had got him a major production deal with uh, Jimmy Iovine and Interscope where he was paid nice and they were taking care of him. They had put him up in a studio house and all of that. Uh, this was when she was in jail. Um, I mean, he, that deal happened before then, but when I went to business, he met this house in the Valley. It was like 98, 98 or something like that. So, um, yeah, so they were trying to take care of Devontae and stuff about Time 1999, 2000, he had started going down, way down, you know, because uh, of that, you know, because of that addiction that he had. Now, you know, I hear that he worked with Michael Jackson. I, you know, the guy was a genius, man. He could touch, he could play any instrument he could touch, I hear. You know what I mean? This guy was uh, a definitely a, a musical genius. And um, my question to you is, there should have any, like, uh, any feelings about trying to bring him over to Death Row as a, like a solo artist? No. No, they were in a deal with MCA, Jodeci, the group Jodeci. He did try to do a deal with uh, KC and JoJo. He was going to do an album on them called the Haley Brothers uh, with just the two of them. He never really cared too much for a Dalvin. You know, he used to always say Dalvin was gay and all of that, you know. Um, you know, so he, he didn't like Dalvin too much, but he knew Devante was a, a talented producer. They cared for him as on the artist tip, but loved him as a producer. And right. so, uh, like I said, when he came home, he tried to go get Dalvin, not Dalvin, Devante. Right. And uh, and he tried to get Devante to uh, do some stuff for you know his people in two thousand one, two thousand two. But then he was on some rock and roll tip. He was on some a new style of music and it didn't work. He was doing bad, and then that's when she, you know, tweet and and uh, not tweet, but uh, Timberland and and um, Missy and um, uh, 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 Genuine and all of them were blowing up. And he was just pretty much trying to y'all need to do right by Devontae. Y'all would have never made it if Devontae wouldn't look out for y'all back in the day. And y'all need to, you know, help Devontae out right now because he's doing bad. Um, but why Devontae ended up leaving Shug or they stopped messing with each other in 2002 and all of that, I don't know. I'm going to ask you one more question for the road, man. Do you think it's possible? that Because everybody, every every hardcore Jodeci fan, you know, and Tupac fan loves the combination with Devontae and Tupac. Do you think it's any way possible that those two guys recorded more than that, more than just that one song, No More Pain? Well, well No More Pain, and then well, that was the one that was released on LCA, like, 2001? Yeah, it came out of All Eyes on Me, No More Pain. Oh, okay. Well, then there's one that was done with, with, with uh, Joe C, not Joe C, with, uh, with Casey and Joe Joe in 2002. That's on, on um, MCA album. On their album that they did with MCA, I think it was. What was that song? If you think you're lonely now, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It was another song that was real hot uh, that they had that they did in like 2001. It was an album that they did on MCA. It was a Tupac song on that uh, with them. But that was that was about it. But shit, yeah, Devontae get himself right. Tupac got hundreds of hooks. I mean, hundreds of uh. Versus somewhere. So you can always make a song. Man, probably it's all to be made. Yeah, that was so the who, wants hear, who wants to hear? Who did you say? Devontae? Or did you say KC? I said Devontae. No more Pac was puffed up. He did. Devontae did uh -huh. the beat. No more pain. He was, Pac was like, yo, Devontae, man, you in the same place? You know, he was puffed up. Yeah, yeah I don't know that song now. But, do Devontae have it still? You know, 
the rap, the rap game and R&B wasn't the same without without Devonte Swing, man. And um, his legacy is is fantastic music that'll live forever, man. It's time.